still like throwing up three to five times a week from how full I am. A nice little close up of the chicken shake. Actually, y'all drink the chicken and film, right? From being honest with y'all, I am as close to sedentary as it gets and eating like a total asshole. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreadh.com. Today we are going to be talking about world champion athlete Hunter McIntyre says, McDonald's, PB&J sandwiches, and cereal fuel his workouts and recovery. This was posted in the subreddit. This guy looks like an elite athlete, and yet his diet sounds like that of a fat middle schooler. If you have middle school where you're from, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, fat grade nine kid, whatever. Doesn't matter. Anyways, lots of cereal, PB&J sandwiches, and chicken, bro. High Rocks champion, Hunter McIntyre, eats up to 7,000 calories of mostly carbs and sugar each day. He eats lots of sugary cereal, PB&J sandwiches, chicken, potato, rice, and steaks, he told Insider. Okay, well, that's a bit different than the fucking <laughs> title. But anyway, sports dietitian Jessica Spendlove said healthy fats can also provide energy for training. No, really? Hunter McIntyre is a world champion athlete, fuels his training, have carb-heavy diet, Consumes a lot of McDonald's, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, Fruit Loops, very little fruit, vegetables or water to fuel his workouts. The athlete is 2022's High Rocks champion, a fitness race that requires endurance and strength and combines running with movements like wall balls, rowing and farmer carries. He said eating a high cal calorie diet anywhere from 4,500 to 7,000 calories a day helps keep his energy levels up and aids his recovery. He estimates his diet is 70 to 80% sugar and simple carbs. Trains before eating. He goes to the gym in the morning three times a week, but he doesn't eat beforehand. Instead, he consumes coffee with two to four tablespoons of honey or maple syrup. He said he prefers to feel light while training and eat more as the day goes on. Yeah, so that's not so unorthodox. You know, I know a lot of people that as long as you're fueled adequately from the day before, essentially, you know, going into the gym, um, without a massive breakfast is not going to be like super detrimental to your performance or anything. Um, I think that is a old wives tale about, you know, breakfast, you know, most important meal of the day needs to be the most nutritious, most dense, blah, blah, blah. Like if you have a giant clusterfuck of oatmeal, eggs, this, that all in your breakfast and it's like bogs you down, makes you bloated feeling while you're trying to move around, especially if you're doing, you know, like athletic movements you're not just like you know stationary doing a fucking bicep curl or a bench press or something like you're actually doing you know, like crossfit style workouts or you're you know running around and shit trying to do it with a massive bloated full stomach can be you know pretty difficult for some people um after training though he eats a landslide of food he eats tons of cereal such as fruit loops and pb and j sandwiches sometimes he goes to mcdonald's for breakfast and orders a cinnamon bun oatmeal and coffee with cream and sugar as the day goes on mcintyre eats whole chickens or steaks with lots of potatoes or rice mcintyre rarely eats vegetables so you know lots of potatoes or rice and like rice you know very very well tolerated from a gi perspective um gets in and out of your system fast enough to get hungry again for the next meal this is something that is a state as a carb source for a lot of bodybuilders who need to put down a ton of food as well as for individuals who have high calorie demands and otherwise need to shovel food down and need their carb intake like through the fucking roof and presumably he defers to this stuff not because it's like optimal necessarily but more so because it's either that or suboptimal fuel in that he will not get enough calories down if he does not defer to this shit it's like bodybuilders who put down tons of food to grow to extreme sizes in the off season have so much lean tissue to support and are on tons of drugs and shit i'm not saying this guy is by the way i'm just saying like an example of somebody who also has huge calorie demands these individuals oftentimes need to add shit in later down the line in order just to hit their bare minimum calorie needs if they don't have a good you know stimulated appetite a lot of people will need to defer to you know a mcdonald's meal maybe it's not ideal and you would be way better off by having a high quality you know steak um rice uh vegetables etc but you know if it's the difference between you getting enough calories and to grow or recover and not and literally losing tissue you know you're gonna pick the option that makes you not fall back on actually deteriorate in performance or recovery so if there's like it's the lesser of two evils essentially like you don't want to uh inadequately fuel your body like this guy has huge demands from the amount of energy expenditure and his workouts 
and presumably muscle mass too. Like, look at this guy's fucking physique, dude. Rarely eats vegetables. Vegetables aside from potatoes are noticeably absent from the athlete's diet. I don't eat any vegetables, he said, except for when someone else has prepared food for him. Doesn't really eat fruit either, except for the occasional plantain or apple, which he said he enjoys. Because this isn't because he doesn't value fruit and vegetables, he said. It's because in reality, there's only so much time in a day and so many times I can take bites of food and it really co comes down to the fact that you need really valuable calories, he said. So again, like valuable, a lot of people will be like, what the fuck value do you get at a McDonald's? And it's like caloric density, presumably, like I said, is what he is trying to get to, like having something that adequately fuels him, even if it's with suboptimal micronutrient density, it's shitty for you. You know, at the end of the day, you either meet your calorie needs or you don't. And if your bare minimum is getting there, but with, you know, some shitty food, you're going to do it if you take this shit seriously. And this is like a super hyper outlier scenario. Like most people will just get fat trying to do this. It's because he is somebody who has such excessive energy demands and presumably, you know, it's, one of those things where like for me, if I do a really hard, high intensity workout, even if I was hungry beforehand, I might, you know, become nauseated by the end of it. Like after a leg day, the last thing I want to do is eat. So oftentimes it may, you know, be easier to take bites of something that is, you know, more valuable or calorie dense in this case. Um, so I don't know how, you know, like it just looks like what he is doing is not necessarily a traditional bodybuilder style workout. And um, I imagine with the amount of shit he's doing, he probably has massive calorie demands and he do otherwise doesn't have the appetite to support it. Whether he gets you know nauseated by high intensity workouts or not, it's kind of irrelevant. I'm just saying it's like multifactorial and ultimately, I think he's probably aware <laughs> it's not the best thing he could be doing. But anyways, so he doesn't think they're you know valuable, but I think he probably actually knows they're valuable. He just means not calorie dense. Rarely drinks plain water. He will some drink some glasses over the day with supplements mixed in, such as greens powder, which contain a mix of nutrients. He said, <laughs> "Yeah." So like, I don't really have. I don't know. Like, I don't work out probably to this like even close to the same degree as this guy in terms of time put in, you know, energy expended and whatnot. However. I do work a fuck ton and this is something that, you know, I value time too. And for me, this is something like, this is not un, very uh, far-fetched for me to wrap my head around. Like I've had very similar scenarios um, literally right now where I do shit like this. People are advised to drink eight glasses of water a day, but individual requirements vary depending on temperature, body size, activity levels, and more. Um, a balanced diet includes healthy fats for energy. While carbs and sugar can serve as a quick energy for workouts, too much of it long-term can be harmful, can throw off the balance of a healthy gut microbiome. Sports dietitian Jessica Splenlove told Insider, healthy fats such as nuts, seeds, avocados, and extra virgin olive oil are high calorie and good energy sources, but also contain beneficial monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. High saturated fat, processed food, and refined sugars are correlated with the development of certain chronic diseases later in life. One large-scale 2019 study found a 10% increase in ultra-processed foods in the diet was linked to a 10% increase in the rates of cardiovascular, coronary, heart, and cerebrovascular diseases. Genetics and overall lifestyle can't be underestimated when it comes to health and fitness, she said, as we're all different. Key considerations would be fueling before training, optimizing recovery, looking at plant diversity for a good gut microbiome, and then choosing healthy fats where possible to get that additional energy intake, she said. And then we've got some uh, pretty interesting clickbait fucking articles here. I'm a chef. I ordered pizza from three chains and there's only one I wouldn't get it. Get again. Goddamn hot and ready pizzas, bro. Good shit. So anyways, this guy's diet, is this like so far fetched and like baffling? To be honest, not really considering like coming from the bodybuilding realm and seeing individuals who, you know, will literally intentionally eat shitty once a day during their off seasons in order to just get the calories down, you know, blend their fucking chicken up and a blender literally and drink it like some of the most wild stuff back in the day i used to blend up oatmeal with olive oil and whey and whey protein it's disgusting but that is not even like a fraction as disgusting as some of the shit gets like you literally have people blending up meat and slamming it like this is an example recently of a full day of eating by hunter labrada and the thumbnail is full day of eating crossed out drinking and basically this guy's entire diet is just like drinking fucking hydrolyzed whey shakes that don't upset his stomach all day um he has one isolate shake he has a bunch of bars and then he has you know rice you know pretty well tolerated carb source and some meat and whatnot and he goes out to eat and just slams as much food as he can once a day 
But in general, like this guy, it's funny because he's actually seen as a guy who stays in condition in the off season, but he says himself down later in this video that he wishes he could stay. <laughs> it's because he does his cardio and has like good habits and shit, but in reality, it's just because he can't get enough food down and his eating habits are like atrocious in terms of how much he is drinking just to hit bare minimums. You know, everyone was like super impressed with the, uh, the conditioning that I was in and I always make the same joke. I wish I could say it's because I'm disciplined and I uh, have been doing like, you know, my cardio and like eating super strict and stuff. But if I'm being honest with y'all, I am as close to sedentary as it gets and eating like a total asshole and still struggling to put on weight. And instead of actually reacting this whole video, let's just do a compilation of each meal he says, just so you can get a, a sense of how wild this is. Like this is, you know, far from ideal when it comes to micronutrient density and whatnot, but you know, it kind of almost goes to show that at the end of the day, if you have to choose between the lesser of two evils and you are a high performing genetic elite fucking bodybuilder who's on, you know, shit ton of gear and is has huge requirements to grow in your off season and this is the only opportunity you're going to get to grow otherwise because your appetite doesn't support you know chewing whole food meals and things that are seen as traditionally like healthy good balanced meals you know you'll defer to the rice krispies the fucking you know shakes the this the that anything you can do to get your calories in so like throwing up three to five times a week from how full i am two bobo's bars and then two scoops of the hydrolyzed isolate hydro again two scoops of it and then rice krispies meal three it's really exciting it is the same exact thing as meal two so 130 grams of Rice Krispies and 66 grams away. Meal four right now, um, if I'm gonna be honest, my meal four and meal five has kind of been like if it fits your mouth hole for the last couple months. Requirements being it needs 50 grams of protein and 100 grams of carbs, anything on top of that's just bonus. Meal five is gonna be 300 grams of rice, 200 grams of chicken, a nice little close up of the chicken shake. I'll drink the chicken and film, right? Meal six, same as meal one right now, which is two of the Bobo's bars and two scoops of the hydrolyzed isolate. So the demands of elite athletes and you know genetic hyper elite bodybuilders and whatnot, you know, their energy expenditure is not comparable to the average person, and they're doing so much that they, you know, have to take extreme measures to support their calorie needs above and beyond what is representative of a normal human you know most of us would just get fat as fuck off this stuff for them it's a bit different but it is certainly not the ideal but it's just interesting how even the lesser of two evils to get the job done like you know it works it's not <laughs> they can get away with it just fine so just wild how when you are tasked with recovering for such an insane burden of i don't know burden of recovery, performance, blah, 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 you end up potentially in a position where you're literally just slamming garbage in order to meet your bare minimum needs. And then people wonder like, what's the secret? Like, is this guy a genetic freak? It's like, yeah, these guys are genetically blessed, but they're also literally pushing their bodies to the limit so much that they need to shovel shit in. So I don't know, there's probably other individuals, you know, who can attest to similar situations or have otherwise, you know, a good, uh, situational comparison, I think, would be uh, a guy who did stuff like this, did like, you know, Spartan races or, you know, like big hectic endurance events that required a shit ton of, you know, fueling, you know, cycling, whatever it is, no pun intended, like literal cycling. And then, in, or I don't know, swimming, like Michael Phelps had to eat a fuck ton of calories too. And then after not doing that anymore, like how did your calorie intake needs change or if you were a top bodybuilder and you were trying to put on mass, I guess that's a bit of a less comparable scenario because we can't really relate to having like 260 pounds lean of tissue, but to a guy who's like, you know, muscular, but within like reasonable, like physiologic parameters seemingly, like seeing how their calorie needs and how they stay shredded eating like 5,000 calories or whatever changes to when they're like doing normal layman person shit after they get out of elite competition. I think that's pretty insightful. So if anybody has, you know, examples of that that they can bring up or personal anecdotes of, you know, how their 
calorie intake needs changed to stay lean or what kept them lean versus they gained weight off of or maintained their weight on when they were doing like tons of endurance work or intense exercise frequently of any capacity versus when they went to like a more, I don't know, conservative, more uh, sedentary lifestyle and how that changed accordingly to maintain the same body composition be pretty interesting. So anyways, all the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, if you want to support the channel. You can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, my preventative medicine and hormone replacement therapy platform. Uh, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode pre-workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch. Recommended diet model for gaining muscle and sports performance. This diet is mindful of GI stress, bloating, um, what you can eat to get hungry again as soon as possible and keep your metabolism essentially like revved, but more so also have be mindful of gastric emptying time and whatnot in order to allow you to get more food down to then pack on more muscle. Like this diet I feel is more tailored to bulking and gaining size and is supportive of athletic endeavors far more than it is for cutting. And it can be tailored for cutting too. It just needs to be tweaked accordingly with more, you know, uh, I don't know, fibrous, you know, fruit alternatives and, you know, other certain things that change in the diet a bit to be more satiating as opposed to something that is just meant to literally get in, do what it's supposed to do to fuel you as quick as possible and then get out, get out, so to speak, not literally like shit out, but like ultimately, you know, be, uh, you know, partitioned as effectively and efficiently as possible so you can get to your next meal. That's the disparity on this diet that I would just be mindful of too if you end up trying it is it's more tailored towards muscle growth, athletic performance than it is for cutting in my opinion, personally. So anyways, you can check that out as well as anything else I'm associated with, clothing company that sponsors me, um, hair loss prevention products, anything I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching, talk to you soon.